I like Santa's usual one. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm supposed to be at doing the presentation today, but I don't know. I see John is online, but I is muted. I don't know if we'll do an introduction or if I should just uh, go ahead. Go ahead and start. Uh, my connection is being a little spotty, so uh, don't wait for me. But make sure someone say it. Say start in the chat, and then we'll get go ahead and get going. Okay. Uh, just one question because I, I checked the I'm reloading the page, but I don't see the changes on the page. So yeah. I will run it with, with my local. Uh, yeah. My local go ahead. Uh, the the build something went wrong, and so I haven't had a chance to see why. Um, oh, okay. Okay. But I click run. It, it'll probably be built in the middle of this call, but uh, use your local version. Sorry about that. Okay, no worries. All right, go ahead and begin. Okay. You guys are seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. I will start there. Okay. This chapter, chapter four, is for data transformation. Um, it's quite a long chapter. Uh, if you see me looking at the other side, because I have the chat, and so if someone has something to say, they can put it in the chat, and uh, so that I can. Uh, react as there are a lot of uh, slides i may go fast over a couple but uh, if someone needs me to stop somewhere just let me know um okay this uh, chapter for the data transformation the learning objective are how to work with the deploy functions the verbs you use to um do the data transform transformation you have the filter function to pick out rows. You have the arrange function to sort the rows. You have a select so that you can select certain um, columns out of the data frame. You have mutate so you can modify the columns. The group so that you can group certain rows in the data frame. And you can apply different functions using summarize. And to streamline the, the transformation, you can use the pipe uh, operation, the operator. The deployer, the package, has functions to manipulate data frames. A data frame consists of uh, columns. That, that those are the variables and the rows, the observations. And the deployer has functions to work either on columns or on, on rows. The deployer is part of a tidyverse. So if you install a package tidyverse, you will have it included or if you only want to use a uh, deployer, you can just install the package deployer and load it, of course, so that you can use it in your session. The data we are working with is uh, NYC Flights 13, which is a package that has the data from the flight data from the New York City from the year 2013. So to use it, we have to install the package and load it. And uh, whenever you are working with new data, just to get a, a, an idea of what you're working with, you can view the the whole uh, the whole data frame in the console by putting flights. As you can see, it will show you, but as it's as it has a lot of uh, columns of variables, you won't see them all. So some other ways to look at the data is to use view flights 
that will open a, a spreadsheet like viewer so that you can view all the data and scroll through it and see what's in there. If you just use flights, um, interrogation question mark flights, you will get the info about all the variables. And another way to check the different size of the observations of number of columns is you can use the number of rows with, with using n row of lights. You can check the number of columns by using n call. Um, another way of getting the number of columns is using length. And to gather all the information in one uh, one comment would be in one comment would be dim flights. Then you get the number of rows and the number of uh, columns. If you want to know all the column names, you can use call names and the argument flights. And you can see the 19 columns that you have. Our alternative is to use glimpse with a single common glimpse flight. You will have the information about the rows, the columns, and all the column names. And you also get uh, the type of the columns, either if it's uh, doubles, integers, or characters. So that information, is, you will get a glimpse with using glimpse, which uh, will give you a lot of information about the data sets you're working with. In dplyr, the basics are when you are working with dplyr, um, and in this specific case, when we are going to do the data transformation, the first argument is always a data, fr data frame. And typically the subsequent uh, arguments are columns to operate on as, vari as variable names. And the output is always a new data frame. One new element, at least for me, was the pipe. That's the pipe symbol is, uh, yeah, the vertical, I don't know the name. <laughs> and with the greater than uh, symbol, that's the pipe symbol. And it, it's pronounced as, and then. What it does is it gets the data, it pipes, it gets the data from one function into the first argument of the next function. So as an example, and it, and it makes it easier to, to combine um, functions together. So as an example, this code that we have here, um, to pronounce it, so to speak, in plain Eng English, you would say, take the flights data set, and then you will filter it with the uh, airports where the destination is IAH, and then, you will group by the you group these filtered results by year, month, and day, and then for each of those groups, you will calculate the average arrival delay, ignoring the missing values. So the the usefulness of the pipe function is that you can combine the different uh, functions to do your analysis or the transformation that you need to get the information that you need from the data. One of, our, of the first uh, verbs or functions that we are going to look at is the filter. This one is to, there's a question. Do you know the difference when using filter between using equal or n? No, I'm not sure about it. Anyone has the answer to that question? It's a question. So I think text. what, yeah, what Venus, I think what you're asking is, for example, the percentage in per percentage. That's a super cool. Um, oh, in. I don't know if it's an argument or, or an it's operator. In. I think it's an operator. That's the name. So the the point of using that one is when, for example, you want to say filter this column that includes or that has all of these possible values. Because usually, for example, you use filter this column 
that has this value, right? And then when you have multiple multiple values like for example if you want to filter across diff different years if you have a column with years and you just don't want to say filter year equal equal 2013 but you want to say equal uh filter i'm sorry okay uh... filter year in exactly like that one in 2013 14 15 so i think that's what you're trying to i think that that answers your question and john yeah. put something else there yeah, I, I didn't understand it. I saw the and I didn't, it's the in. Okay. Um Venus, we have uh on the slide there is an example of that. And so when I get that, I will give it a little more attention to to that. But basically it's what Gavi says. When you are doing, for example, uh when you are going to fil filter, you can use the comparison, you can filter for all the flights. <laughs> that has a, a delay uh, more than uh, two hours or one, 120 minutes. So you use the greater than. Um, if you have to look for the flights that departed on January 1, January 1 is basically two um, conditions that you have to check what the month has to be the first month and the day has to be the day first one. So that, that's why you use the operator and so that you have a filter for month is equal to one and day is equal to one so that you can get the January 1st. In the case that you are looking for the flights that departed in January or February, you will have to do a month equal to one or month equal to two, two. So as an, and then we have the example that you asked for like uh, Venus. In this case, the same that we had above, this is the same. You are looking for month equal to one or you're looking for month equal to two. And this is the same as this one, month in one or two. Maybe this one is a little easier or um, uh, uh, when, you are, when you do have to um, add more conditions, so if you have to include, for example, March and April, you can just put uh, comma three and comma four, but otherwise, if you had the other notation, you would have to do month is equal to one or month is equal to two or month is equal to three or, so it, it would be a little longer for the, for the, for the notation. Yes, I'm seeing, I'm seeing also, uh, from Luke Morris, also another explanation. So basically, I I, I hope your your question has been answered, uh, Venus. Okay, moving on. The one thing is that um, what we said when you use the operators and the functions, you will get a new data frame. It will be if you if you do it this way, it will be printed on uh, on the on screen, but it will, will not be safe. So if you actually want to save the data frame, the resultant data frame, you have to assign it. So in this case, January gets January 1, Jan 1 gets the result of this operation, which is flies. And then you filter where month is one and day is one. Now that you have Jan 1 as a, as a variable, you can use it in, in further, uh, analysis and just for uh for the sake for having it here <laughs> some comparison because if you are going to filter most of the time you will be using the, these uh comparison operators you can use the greater than the greater than or equal the less than the less than or equal the equal or the not equal those are some of the comparison and some of the logical operators that you can use are the end where all expression must be true in order to return true. The R, one or more of the expression must be true. And just a note, this symbol is the key above the return key with a shift. Um, it's not a lower, cat, lower case letter L. <clears throat> um, and the interrogation, in, not interrogation, the exclamation. 
um, symbol is the not so that you negate the expression. Um, as we are starting to use uh, the 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 field, the deep layer and the functions and the pipes and that kind of thing, um, there are some common mistakes that that um, new users most of the time do. In this case, one of the mistakes is, for example, if you're using, if you are going to compare something to check for equality, you have to use a double equal sign. If you use only one. A single equal sign is like an assignment, and that's a, that's an error. In that case, filter will tell you when when there when there is an error. So that's one thing. Whenever you run run a com comment and you see the uh, an error, please read through it to get uh, because most of the time it will give you a hint of what you can do to to fix fix the error. In this case, if you would filter month equal one equal sign one you are not go, looking for um month is equal to month to one you are basically saying you are assigning month a one to month which is not what you what you want to do so that's why a filter will give you an error another uh, mistake is uh, when you're talking in english you 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 will use word um uh the statement like, okay, um, filter for the months for January or February. So, in in plain English, it will it will sound like it's okay. It's either um, January or uh, February. But in this case, for uh, uh, for the program for for R, it will mean you filter where the month is one or two. The so it's not. And it doesn't interpret interpret it as uh, the month is one or the month is two. So the correct way to to write the same is filter for the month is equal to one or the month is equal to to two. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, with arrange, so we had filter. Now an, an, another uh, verb or function for deploy is arrange. In this case, you can change the order of row. The first argument is the data frame. The other arguments will be the columns from the name that you will use to sort. And the default order will always be for uh, ascending, so small to big. And in some cases, you will want to have a descending order, big to small. In that case, you will have to use a desk function. As, a, as an example, um, to sort by year, and then to sort by month, and then to sort by day, and then to sort by uh, uh, the departure time, you can use the flies and then you arrange it for year, month, day, and the depth time. This would be the resulting table. And if you, for example, want to sort the flies from the least delayed, as you want the least delayed, then you have to change to the order. So in that case, you use descending, desk, departure, delay. As you can see, the departure delay, it is, it is in descending order. Yet another function is distinct. It will find the unique rows in a data set. It operates on, on rows. And you can, uh, as an optional argument, you can find um, add uh, column names so that you can find unique combinations of, of values. For example, if in the flights you want to, if there are any um, rows that are the same, if you just say flights and then distinct, it will uh, remove any dupli duplicate. In the, in the case of the flights, this data says they are not um, much distinct, but 
whatever. If you have uh, another data, your own data set, you may find sometimes uh, information that's that's double. So, and if you only want to um, count or know one one single uh, time, count it one single time, you will you can use this thing so that it will only use the unique values. For example, to find unique origin plus destination pairs, you will put flight and then distinct orig orig origin and destination. In this case, in the whole data set, you will have a lot of time, a lot of flights will go, for, for example, from New York City to Houston. But you want to, every, you don't want to um, count all those flights, but just you want to know um the unique paths of, of, of origin and destination so how many of those are and in this case you can see there are uh, 224 destinations gee uh, i don't know <laughs> those airports but at least i think gfk and miami at least i think i i can spot those um if you want to keep when you when you use the this thing, it will only show you the ones the 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 column names that you used in the function. But if you want to keep the others, and then you can use uh, uh, the keep all um, argument. So then you do flights and then distinct origin dest, and then you skip all is true. In that case, it will give you the table with all the 19 columns. You can also use, use count. In that case, with count, you can use, um, it will it will count what it says. It, it, it will count the number of occurrences. And then if you use it to sort, and you use sort is true, it will also arrange in descending order. In this case, the count origin destination sort is true. It will count all the on the all the pairs, and you will have JFK to LAX, LAX, and you will know that there are a bunch of flights, 262 flights that that goes to from JFK to LAX. The exercises for the rows. Um, I will go through them. If there was one or something that you guys didn't get, or you let me know, so we can give it a, a closer look. The question one: In a single pipeline for each condition, find our flies the middle condition. The first time I read it, I I thought I had to write a single. A uh, comment that would do all the conditions that were listed, but then I saw when I came to the last ones, I said, okay, no, it, it for every line I had to create a comment. So in this case, if you're looking for all the flights that had an arrival delay of two hour, um, two or more hours, the arrival delay is this one, R delay, and it has to be greater or equal to 120. Two hours is 120 minutes. So because the variable is expressed in minutes, you have to use 120 instead of two. And if you arrange um, in descending order, you will see the, the highest um, um, arrival delay at the top. And just a note, I'm using the relocate and the mutate functions that are from the next section, but uh, I'm cheating a little and using them in this section just to uh, for have a better visualization. So in this case, I will relocate our delay at the, at the front of the column name so that we can see the information and we can see in descending order the flights with, with most delay. Um, all the 
flies that flew to Houston. And those are the one with the code IAH or HOU. So in that case, it's flights and then filter with destination in. In this case, you, you can use in or you can use dest double equal sign um, EHR dest double equal sign HOU. But in this case, like I said, if you use um, this one with in, if you need to add another city, it's just um, adding a comma and the city. So it's easier to modify the the um the command um all the flights that were operated by united american or delta we have the carrier in each of those ua dl or aa departed in summer they tell you that the months that is summer, so you can use the month in seven, eight, and nine. Those are the months of July, August, and September. Arrived more than two hours late, but didn't leave late. So you have to, it has more than two hours late. So the arrival delay is uh, bigger than or equal than, greater or equal than 120, but it didn't leave late. So either it, um departed on time or earlier so you have to look for um less or equal to zero were delayed by at least an hour but made up over 30 minutes in flight in that case delayed at least an hour that is that dep departure delay at least um, greater than 60 and made up over 30 minutes in flight then you can say the departure delayed minus the arrival delay is more than the 30 minutes that they are asking for. So in this case, you have to do a little math to get the information that you're looking for. The other question, sort the flights to find the flights with longest departure delays, find the flights that left the earliest in the morning, um, arrange, in descending with departure delay and arrange and then arrange uh, for departure time. In this case for cash question T, I'm using the mutate, but without using the mutate, you can, this function that you used of this calculation, the hint that you they saying try to include a, a math calculation inside your function. In my case, as I'm using the mutate to create a speed column, um, it, it does have a, a math math uh, a math function that was to create a speed column so that it, I can easily arrange on on speed. But if you don't want to do that, you can just use arrange on the distance on uh, distance over airtime over 60. But in this case, I did the mutate and the relocate speed so that I can have the information at, at the front of the, the column as the first one. Any question? No, I don't see any question. Was there, any, was there a flight on every day of 2013? I did it in two ways, either using count, then you can count for the year, the month, and day, and you sort for true, and then you arrange for n. In that case, you will see the answer is 365 days. So that every day there was a, a um there was a flight, and I'm I'm arranging because if I'm counting the the number of flights. So if this one would have been say zero then it would, it would mean that on that day, there were not no flights, but I see that on, on all the days that were more than zero, so there were flights on every day. Maybe a more straightforward and easier way to do it is with distinct. In this case, you always also get a 
table 365 days. So in that case, the question is yes, there was a flight every day because the resultant tables has uh, 365 rows. Yes, a com comment there by Luke. Yeah, because the first time when I did it with counts, because I didn't um, get on, on this thing, but then I saw the count, I said, okay, I do have 360, but um, am I sure that every every day had a had a, a flight? So the arrange was to to get uh, to make sure to to have it that uh, information extra information. But of course, the using the distinct is a little more straightforward. But sometimes you might will take you to places you don't want to be. <laughs> Which flight is the question five? Which flight traveled the farthest distance and which traveled the least distance? These are the two commands for that. Um, because yeah, we have a lot of slides, so I learned. this question six. I does it matter what order you used, whether you used uh. <laughs> Doesn't matter what order you use, filter and arrange if you are using both, why or why not? Think about the results and how much work the function would have to do. In my case, I I, I, I think it, it does matter. For example, if you use arrange before the filter, the sorting will be applied to all the rows in the data set, including those that will be fil filtered out later. So in my case, I think it's uh, better to filter out the data and then use uh, arrange. I didn't do an actual test on that, but I think uh, an actual benchmark, so to speak. But I think that uh, would be the case that it would be uh, um, better to filter, filter first and then arrange. If anyone have a question or remark, otherwise we will go on. And if that question is clear also, we, have, we were doing the rows. Now we are going to the columns, the four important verbs that affect columns without changing the rows. Those are mutate, select, mutate, that will create a new column. And it will be created using uh, information from the, the existing columns. Selects is to show, uh, it select will change which columns are present in the data frame. Rename is to change the name of the, the column and relocate is to change the position of the column. Mutate and relocate I already used in the exercise, but here we are going to actually look at them. Mutate will add a new column based on values from existing columns. For example, if you want to compute the gain, which is how much time a delayed flight made up in the app, and the speed in my R, if you want to compute the, the speed in miles per hour, you can do a mutate so that you can create a new column gain. And speed using this function to get the speed, the information. So you will have a new column called speed with, uh, with, with, with the values that you need. Yes, as Gabby is saying, mutate can also be used to rename. But select can also be used to, to, to rename. But yeah, and personally, I, I yeah, if you already use mutate, maybe you can use it. Personally, I, I, I would try to use the functions for what, what they are, but uh, so rename to, to rename and, and, and not use select because I, there is an example here that you can use select also to rename, but uh, maybe personally, I would prefer using the, 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 the specific function to do the specific thing. Um, you can use the before argument to add the variable on the left eye sign. So if you're using gain and speed, if you don't use the before, it will use it, it will put it like we, like we saw here, If we don't use it before, as in the first example, it will put it at the end. But if we put it before one, means we are putting it, we are putting it 
the the new columns at the at the start of the data frame. Or you can use after. And even whenever you use both of both um, before or after, you can use the variable name or you can use the, the position. So in this case, in this example, you are saying, okay, I want to create gain, I want to create speed, and I want those two after the column day. Or you can use instead of after day, you can use after three, I think which in the original year Monday, yes, day is the third column. So you could also say here, instead of after day, you could see after three. Another argument is uh, to use skip. In this case, um, when you are using mutate, you can decide either you, either you will one the data frame with only the one the only the new columns in that case you you use keep used otherwise you will get a, a data frame with all the older uh, with all the, the the columns so in that case we are computing gain hours and uh, gain per hour and we are using keep is used so we only will have a data frame with uh, with those with the columns that were were used in the calculation. Like we said, if you don't assign the result of the computation back to flights, the the new variables will only be displayed and not stored. So like the example when we did uh, with uh, January 1, when we stored Gen 1, um, the information of the uh, first month and first day, this is also the case with mutate. So whenever you use mutate, if you want to store the, the information, the new data frame, you have to store it in a new variable. Otherwise it will be printed, but you will not be able to use it for them unless you pipe it in, a, in another um, function. The other uh, verb is select. In that case, you can... Um, Pick which columns you uh, uh, which columns or variables that you want to to use. For example, in that case, you are you can deselect the, the columns by name. So you say flights, and then you select the year, the month, and the day. In that case, you will get only those columns in your new data frame. Or you can select all columns between year and day. Then you can use the semicolon. Um, Operator, so year, semicolon day. That will that means year, month, and day. Or if you use the negation, select all columns except those from year to date. This part selects from year to date, and this exclamation um, mark will say that will negate. So in that case, you are negating. So you will select all the ones that are not in year and day. You can select all columns that are that are where the variables are from uh, the form of character. So then you can use where is, is character. And those are the carrier, the tail number, the origin, the origin and the destination. Some of the helper function that you have for select that you can use to make your life easier is to start with, in that case, it uh, it starts, so you have to pass a string. You can use the end switch. You can use the contains. It will have something, it will check if the string, the, names, the name will contain that string, or you can use a num range. In that case, it will, if you have a, column names like you have destination one, destination two, destination three. Sometimes you have, uh, in other data sets, you have columns that have uh, um, a string and, uh, and, and a part of a, a, it's a number, then you can use the numerage for the, those cases. There are some more, but you can use the um, interrogation question mark select for more details. And here is the example that we have where you can use select to rename. 
So for example, if you say select tail num, tail underscore num as tail num, it will uh, give you that. When, when you are selecting, you can do the rename. But if you are going to actually rename a bunch of uh, uh, columns, then there is an actual uh, function to, to do that. So here is the case, rename tail num as tail num. Then you will keep the other uh, columns, but just rename tail num tail num and you will um, make a new tail underscore num. And as a tip, if you have a bunch of uh, columns and uh, you think you need to fix them, there is a, a package janitor and it has a function clean names that automates part of the cleaning process. I haven't used it, but uh, it seems like it's quite useful. <clears throat> With relocate, we have used it in the in the exercises, but basically relocate is to move the variables around, so to place them where you want them in your data frames with could help you with the visualization. And uh, by default, relocate will move the variables to the front. So if you put flights and then relocate the time time hour and the air time, it will put the time hour as the first column and the air time as the second, and then it will put the rest of the columns of the data frame. Um, you can also use the before uh, and, and after arguments, just the same as, yes, you did in uh, mutate. So in this case, you can relocate, relocate all the you can relocate all the year and uh, all the columns between year and departure time, and you can put them after time out. The same with before. For the columns, you are the exercises that was uh, relocate is more efficient. Select var var everything. I didn't know, Donald. I didn't know about um everything. Does it mean that if you select, you will be using var one and var two, and will it keep? Um, the, the rest when you do the select bar one, bar two, everything done it or because re re oh, okay. <laughs> okay, for the exercises. Um, the first question, you have to compare the departure time, the scheduled departure time and the departure delay. How would you expect those three numbers to be related? Um, I think the departure time should be like the scheduled departure time plus the departure delay. And if we do, if we show those values, we can see that's pretty much what it is. Departure time, 517, 515, and two. So these two added up. Is this so it basically is the departure time is the scheduled departure time plus the departure delay, which makes sense. Um, brainstorm as many ways, many ways for me was a little too much, so I only did uh, two possible to select departure time, departure delay, I arrival see. time, arrival delay, and flights. Some I heard something, anyone have a comment? No. So in this case, if you are looking for, you, you have to look for a different, uh, they, are, they want you to select departure time, departure delay, arrival time and arrival delay and from the data frame flight. So you can see, you can just name them. So flights and then you select the names or you can see that they 
start either with departure <laughs> or they start with arrival. So you can use this function select starts with depth and starts with arrival. There are probably other ways to do the question, but I think uh, two was enough. Um, question three, what happens if you specify the name of the same variable multiple times in, select, in a select call? Um, from my observation, it will only show the column at the first position it was specified. So as an example, you, I will, I'm selecting and I'm putting the departure time at the, at the as first uh, argument and also last argument, but the result only shows it once. What does the NER function do? What might it be helpful in con why might it be helpful in conjunction with this uh, vector? Um, in this case, NEF doesn't check for missing variable. So if you do select any of variables, you will get those that are available. Uh, flags with select matches. Um, I see a Galix, a Galic, a Galic, uh, uh, um, solution for flags. Is uh, yeah, I think that's with uh, regular expression, but I I'm I'm not that uh, versed in that, so I didn't touch that. Question five, does the result of running the following code surprise you? How do the select helpers deal with upper and lowercase by default? How can you change defaults? I see here something that puts time with uh, uh, time in uppercase and it does give a result. And that was a, a little, for, for me, it was surprising because uh, I thought it, 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 it would, uh, it wouldn't find anything, but apparently it contains, ignores the case. And if you check the documentation, that's actually the case. So it ignores the case by default. And to change that, you can use uh, ignore cases false. And if you do that and you run the same comment with time and all uppercase and you use ignore case false, it won't find anything because all the column names have uh, R and lowercase. So in that case, to get the information that you need, if you're using ignore case equal to false, you will have to use a time and lowercase. Um, rename, rename add time to add time minutes to indicate the units of measurements and move it to the beginning of the data frame. That one is quite easy. You do the rename and you do the relocate. Why, does the, why doesn't the following work and what does the error mean? In that case, you are doing a flight and then you select tail num and then you want to arrange on average arrival delay. But if you select tail num, you only get a tail num, the only a single uh, a column tail num. So in that case, um, uh, error delay, arrival delay won't, won't be available. So you, you won't be able to arrange on our delay which is what the error say, um, are delay not found. The pipe, we have been using the pipe uh, for uh, already in the, in the previous examples, but yeah, um, it's the same example, flights, you get the flights the, um, data frame, and then you filter by destination, you mutate and and then you select and then you arrange. So that's the, the beauty or the power of using the pipe. Um, this seems more readable than this, which would you would have to do if you didn't have the pipe. So you have to do the arrange and then open it and then do the select. So yeah, it's and it's little uh, backwards. So first you have to do the flights 
to filter for the for the destination and then you have to mutate and then you have to select and then you have to arrange so it's uh it's not nice the other way to use it which may be a little more readable than the above is using intermediate objects this one i i i've used a little to um when you are debugging and where you want to know step for step what you what you're doing but even if you're doing pipes you can also like if you are going if you're looking for the only the result of the filter you can comment this part out and then run it and then at every step of the pipe and run those. So it's also a way to, to do the debugging. But so it depends what you're doing. Um, usually the pipe operator will make the it's uh, easier to, to write the code and to read it. And as a tip, because I see people using the, the other pipe symbol, if you do the if you use the built-in keyboard sh shortcut, it will place, place the pipe for you. So you can just keep using the, the, the shortcut and configure RStudio to use it, the, the new pipe so that you don't have to type it in. The groups I had, I have a here. Yeah, the, the first uh, here, here's where it get a little uh, harder for me because the first, uh, the filters distinct and the other comments were uh, easier for me and groups. And when we get to grouping and, and ungrouping, it's getting a little fizzy for me. So let's see what we have. In this case, when using group, you can group by and summarize and slice functions. Those are the, the, the functions. When you have to um, divide your, your data sets, for example, if you use a group by, you can group all your flights by month. So whatever you do afterwards will be based, um, will have the, all the data will be grouped by a month. If you, if you look at this, the, you will see that R is, is telling you it's the same table, it's the same information, but they have added uh, a class that tells you that the data is grouped by months. But it says here, it, it doesn't change the data, but it, it will indicate that the data is grouped by month. In that case, uh, this information here at the top. Summarize is the other. You can um, get, you can um, use a, a function, for example, the mean, the, or whatever function that you need, you can use it. You can group first, group uh, uh, the, the, the variables by, by, by a column, and then you can summarize using a function. For, as an example, you have the flies, then you can group them by month, and then you can summarize the average. For example, if you want all the departure delays, if you take the mean of that, you will have an uh, average average delay for the month. So in that case, you will get uh, this, this uh, um, data frame where you have the months, the 12 months, but in this case, you will have a bunch of NAs not available. In this specific case, it's because in our original data sets, there were um, flights that had missing data. So to ignore those, we will use the delay when I'm calculating the mean. We will use depth delay with na.rm is equal to true. And then we will find the information that we were looking for, the 12 months and 
the average delay per month. Another, uh, another useful uh, function is to use the N, which returns the number of rows in each group. So if you group by month you and you summarize, then you will get the delay. But if you also use N is equal to N, the function N, then you will have the count like this. So now you have the month, all the months, all the delay, and you will know uh, how many flights there were per month. This slice function allows you to, to ex extract specific rows. So you can um, get with slice head, you get again the first row. Uh, if you change N to five, for, for example, NS5, you take the first five rows. Um, if you slice tail is the less rows. If you slice min, takes the row with the smallest value. And you will put the smallest value in which column it is. You can slice for max. And if you want to take a, a random row, you can slice for sample. You can, if you want to say, um, instead of asking for the five, um, for example, slice head with uh, NS1 or NS5 to get five rows, you can also use prop to select a 10%. In this case, 0 0.01, you will use um, um, prop is 0 0.01, then you will select the 10% of the rows in, in each group. Just a note, in this case, slice will keep the ties so in this case, for this example, we are grouping by destination and we, we are slicing to get the max um, arrival delay. And we are telling it, give us the max. But in this case, we have 105 destination, but we are getting 108 results. So the, the, that's just a, a thing to, to, to take into account because um, when you use slice mean or slice math, it will keep values of the type. So if you are looking for a, a max value and there are two um, rows with have a max value of say uh, 100, so it will keep the type values. Unless you tell them to set which type is false, it will only get one of the uh, max values. Um, grouping by multiple variables. For example, if you want to have a date, a date is uh, a year and a month and a day, so you can group by uh, month of or day. And in that case, you will get the groups all the all the days per per. Uh, all the dates of a year. So it makes sense that you have 365 uh, rows in this new frame, data frame. Um, when you summarize, when you have grouped over more than one variable, and when you're going to summarize, it will peel off, so to speak, of the last group. And it will inform you that So if you are okay with that, and and if you know what you're doing with uh, so and you're okay with it, and if you want to suppress this this uh, um, warning message that the summarize will give you, you can use the um, the groups argument. The ungrouping is doing the reverse. So if you want to, if you add a group and you want to ungroup it, you can uh, use the function ungroup and it, and it will give you the original um, data frame. Uh, 
And here is an example when you summarize an ungrouped um, data frame. In this case, we have the daily data frame that we created um, before that was grouped on a uh, year, month, and day. And then we will ungroup it and then we will summarize over the average delay. And we will count also, we always also count the flight. In this case, because you have ungrouped, it will just and, and you will sum and you are summarizing, it will just be, um give you one single um one single uh, um result because if it's if it's on group it's it's a single data frame and it will consider it as belonging to a one group we are getting okay a new way of group grouping Yes, um, we are getting close to time. Yes, um, the new way because we we had the group by, but but that's a way new way to use to to group the information by using the dot by function. This is a new uh function. It's not widely used, but uh, it seems to be it will become um standard. But it also says that the the, the group and um on group will not uh, be deleted. But you you can still if you are doing a, a a new um if you make a new code, you can use uh, the dot by to group. And you can in this example, if you are you going to use flights before instead of um grouping, doing flights and then group. And then summarize, you can do just flights and then summarize. And in the summarize, use the argument um, does by as one, which would be the same as group by month. And in the case you want to group by multiple variables, you can also do the same using a vector with the different columns that you want to um, group by. For the exercises for the groups, um, they are a bunch. And my apologies because I didn't manage to do the um, the the last one, so I owe you guys that one. But uh, for the question, with question, first question, which carrier has the worst um, average delays? And the challenge: Can you disentangle the effects of bad airports versus bad carriers? Why or why not? Uh, think about the flights and the group by carrier, and Think about flights and then group by carrier and then summarize over n with n. Um, for the first question, which carrier has the worst average delay? I think it's simply doing uh, flights and then group by carrier and then summarize getting the delay, which would be the, uh, the average um, arrival delays. And I'm using n just to, to have a, a, a count. In that case, I find that F9, I don't know which carrier it is, but F9 is the one with uh, the highest average delay. But the other question is to um, use a group by to try to look for the effect of a bad airport versus bad carrier. I didn't manage to do it uh, completely, but um, but I just did the following. I first did a, a group by a carrier and destination. So for the by the two columns that they suggest in the hunt in the hint, um, and I get the average delay again for uh, for each and and account it. And in this case, you can see that for example, UA I think it's United going to Seattle. It has the highest um, average delay, but you can see that it only happens two times. And for example, this one has a, a lower average delay, but it happens a bunch of times. So 
um, and the, it also depends on which uh, uh, airport you have. So in that case, I thought maybe getting a total delay would also shed some light. So I put uh, a group uh, carrier and destination and I get the, the delay. I just um, created the sum of all the delays and then I calculate a total delay, which is the delay and then multiplied by the number of, of flights. And in that case, you have uh, DL going to Atlanta and B6 going to um, FLL. Um, they have a biggest um, total delay. So. I don't know um if you guys have other ideas on how to do, but I think you you will have to do um various calculations to oh SCL is in this okay um to get the information going of what is uh how you can you have to do different calculations to um get the information if it's a problem with a bad carrier or if if it's a problem with a uh, uh, a bad airport. Because maybe the, the 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 flight is on time, but when it gets to the airport, it it's a problem. It it doesn't um get um have the uh, all the protocols in space to be uh to do uh, everything on time. Um, question two: Find the flights that are most delayed upon departure from this destination. This is the comment I came up with, so um, from the flights, then you group by destination and then you slice and you get the, the slice for max, you get the departure delay with NS1 so that you get the max and you relocate and then you arrange um, to get the ones, which is this. Um, Another way to, to write the same is using the buy and the slice max. So instead of grouping before, you just call slice max and then you use the grouping by with the destination here. Um, how do delays vary over the course of the days? Illustrate your answer with a, with a plot. This seems the cool thing that you can do. Um, so you get the information by using uh, in this case, I used the the the, the, the old uh, for for the nostalgic under you guys that want the old pipe. <laughs> you can use this one. So you, you in front of lives, you will group first by hours, and then by summarizing, you get the delays by by hour, and then the results you can plot it by using ggplot. You can also pipe use the pipe and plot, pipe it di directly and and ggplot. But in this case, I separated it. And in this case, you can see that uh, the um, the delay and in the early mornings there is less delays, and during the day the delays um start uh, climbing until at around uh, seven o'clock or so they start declining again. What happens if you supply a negative end to slice pin and friends? Um, from my observation, from my observation, it doesn't slice the data, but it doesn't arrange the values. So, as an example, I'm doing a flight and then a slice using NS5. I get a result with a table of only five. So, those are the five that you are requested. But if you put slice with N is minus five. You will get the whole tab table, but I do see that it's arranged. So maybe that's useful for something. Question five, explain what counts does in terms of the deployer verbs. You just learned what does the sort arguments to count do. In this case, count is used to count the number of rows in a data frame, and it's grouped by one or more variables and the sort is uh, specifies how the results are sorted. Um, and the last one, quick. In this case, we are going as just uh, we are using not we are not using the B, the the flights data, but we are going to use uh, 
the baseball data, and that this is to just to, to show you that when you are summarizing data, it's always um, interesting to to use the n to count the number of observation. So because if you are summarizing, if you are um, looking for a mean or a sum or something like that, um, it's important to also know what are the number of uh, the variables that you use. Um, they are using here uh, an example with the data of uh, the batters. And I think it's easier to see in a plot that's here below that you can see that someone that has um, have less time at bat, it's uh, uh, the, the distribution of, of their um, performance is uh, it's wide. So you have, uh, while people that have the batters that have a longer, um, more um, at bats, they will um the 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 distribution it will um correlate more so what you are saying for example one what the 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 summary or the the thing to take away from from this uh, case study is if for example you just um check for performance you will get uh, the ones with a, a performance of one which should be the, the highest performance. But if that person only was lucky that he was one time at bat and he hit a hit, a home run or whatever, his person performance would be great, but it doesn't mean they are the best player. So in that case, it's better to have someone with a performance of, of 0.5 or even per, um, 0.3 that has been at place um, a thousand times than a person that had a single uh, hit in a single turn. Um, and with that, if someone this, uh, if someone has any questions, or uh, we are over time. So if someone has any question or something, or else we can uh, close it up. Thank you very much. It was interesting. Thank you. It was a little, and sorry about uh, question six of uh, this exercise. I didn't manage to do it, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, and with the groups, with the grouping and ungrouping, it's a little fuzzy for, us, for me, and I, 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 I do think I have to re, re look at, at it again, but, uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, happy to do this, and uh, if there is any question, we can do it in Slack. Um, I have for, for, from John also, I had some uh, feedback on, on, on the slides and I will uh, at a later time also get uh, make some uh, modifications to um, have those changes too. Well, if there's no further questions, I think we can put an end in the chat.